how can you think and make me for you? Then the dad would say to prove them true. You do advance your claim more and more. When truth kills truth, oh, devilish holy friend,
not make it such an argument. But fare you well. Tis partly my own fault. Which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul. Fair Helena. So excellent. Sweet Scott scorn her so. But she cannot entreat, I can compel. Thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee. <laughs> by my life I do. And by that which I will lose for thee to prove him false. That says, I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. <laughs> Thou say so. Withdraw and prove it to. Quick, come. I say, sir, where to take all this? <laughs> no, 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 no. You seem to break loose. Say, I have your follow.
way. And here in Westby, come thou, gentle dame, from one that show me thy gray light. I'll find Demetrius and revenge this fight. Oh, why comest thou not? Why be it thou carest? For while I wot thou runnest before me, sifting at every place, and darest not stand nor look me in the face, where art thou now? Come hither, I am here. <laughs> Nay, then thou mockest me, if ever I thy face might be like see. I do not know thy way. Take this, constrainest me, measure out my length on this cold bed. My day's approach was to be visited. <laughs> oh, weary night! Oh, how long, oh, tedious night! Abate thy hours! <laughs> Shine, comfort unheased, that I may back to Athens to day my trip. These and my poor company detest. And sleep that sometimes shuts up sorrow's eyes. Steal me a while from mine own company. Three by one, it comes one more. Two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. Never so weary. Ask, my head, like, I must scratch. What wilt thou hear from me? 
music, my sweet love? I have a reason to believe you like music. Let's have the tongues in the bone. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. Truly, a pack of provender. I did much more. Good try of uh, I would have a desire for a bottle of hay. <laughs> Good hay, sweet hay, have no fellow. I have a venturous fairy that shall seek the sprouts horse and fetch thee enough. I'd rather have <coughs> an horse than a dry pea. Thank you. None of your people spare me. I have an expedition of sleep call upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee. the barky fingers of the elm. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou the sweet sight? Her dotage now I do begin to pity. For meeting her I have laid behind this wood, seeking sweet favor for this hateful fool, I then did abrade her and bond with her. I had had my pleasure talk with her, and she in mild mercy begged my favor. I then did ask for her, her changeling child, which straight she gave me, and her fairy said to bear him to my bower in fairyland. And now that I have the boy, I will undo the hateful imperfection of her eyes. And, gentle pup, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he, awaiting one the other, <coughs> No more of this night's accident, but as the fierce vexation of a dream. <coughs> but first, I will release the fairy queen. See, thou want to see. See, thou want to see. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower has such force and blessed power. Now, to Tanya, wait you, my sweet queen. My Oberon. What visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of an ass. <laughs> there lies your love. Oh! Oh! How came these things to pass? Oh, how mine eyes do loathe his visage now. Silence a while. Robin, take off this head. To Tanya, music calls, and strike more dead than common sleep of all things to fetch. Music. Oh, music such a charm as sleep. <laughs> when thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes peep. Sound music, come, my sweet queen, and let us rock the ground whereon these sleepers be. Tomorrow midnight solemnly tins in Duke Theseus's house triumphant. There shall the cares of faithful lovers be quite with peace. All shall be. Come, my lord, and in our flight, tell me how it came this night that I sleeping here was found with these mortals on the ground. We will, fair queen, up to the mountains, talk and walk with musical confusion of sound and echo. Is not this a day that Hermia should get answer of a joke? 
It is my lord. Let us wake them with the bells. Good morrow, friends. St. Valentine has passed. Uh, these wood birds but the couple now. Pardon, my lord? I pray you all stand up. I know you two are rival <laughs> enemies. How comes this discourse in the world? That hatred is so far from jealousy to sleep by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazingly. Half sleep, half waking, that as of yet I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly when I sleep, and now you can sleep me, so it is. I came with Hermia and Hither, our intent was to be gone from Athens where we might, without the peril of the Athenian law. Enough, enough! My lord, you have enough! I beg the law, the law upon his head! They would have stolen away! They would have, Demetrius! Thereby have bested you and me, you of your wife, and me of my consent. I consent that she should be your wife. My fair lord, fair Helen has told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood, and I'm here and hither follow them. Fair Helen has bent me following me, but my good lord, I would not by what power my bluster Hermia melted at the snow. Seem to me now as a remembrance of this idle thought which in my childhood I did so upon. But my good Lord, of virtue and faith, the pleasure of mine eyes is only to Helen, to her, my Lord. In my health, I do wish it, long for it, love it, and will forevermore be true to it. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse, we will hear not. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by, these couples shall be eternally knit with us. And for our compassion now is something more. Away with us to Athens, three and three. We'll hold a feast in great solemnity. Come, part with us. <coughs> it soon seems small and undistinguishable, like far off mountains turned into clouds. Methinks I see these things with parted eyes, when everything seems double. So mistaken. And I, so Demetrius, my fool, mine own and not my own. Are you sure that yet we are awake? It seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think that Duke is to make bid us follow him? Yea, and my father, and Hippolyta. If he did bid us follow to the temple, why then we are awake. Let's follow him. By the way, let us recount our dream. Pyramids, but, but 
really be, you know, he has simply the best wit of any handicraftsman in Athens. Yea, and the best person too. And he is a very paramour, poor sweet voice. You must say paragon. A paramour is a thing of naught. Masters! <laughs> the Duke is coming to the temple. And there are two or three lords and ladies. More Mary! If our sport had gone forward, we had all of the name men. We only brought him. Thus hath he lost six times a day during his life. He cannot escape six times a day. And if the Duke had not given him six times a day for playing Pyramus, I'll be hanged. He would have deserved it. Six times a day in Pyramus or nothing. Where are these lads? Where are these lads? Oh. Oh. Almost oh. the greatest day of oh. this happy hour. Masters, I am to discourse wonders. But ask me nothing. For if I tell you, I am not true to you. I will tell you everything as it fell out. Let us hear, sweet bottom. Not a word of me. All that I will tell you is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel ready, new strings to your beard, new ribbons to your pumps. Every man is presented at the palace, and men look over his part, for the short and the long is, our play is preferred! <laughs> so, in any case, let the whiskey have clean linen, and let not the man play the lion's part tear his nails, for they shall hang up with the lion's claws. And master, eat no onions, <laughs> nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet bread. And I do not doubt you see them say, it is a sweet comedy. No more words! Away! Go away! Play finished. 
and tragic for my noble lord Adrian, for Peter Bissinger does kill himself, which, when I saw her, I must confess, made my eyes water, but more merry tears the passion and loud laughter never shed. Who be that to the Hard men and men know we can act with Peter, there were days in their minds for now. And I have toiled that on breath memories which the same play against your nuptials. And we will hear it. No, my noble lord, it is not for you. For I have given over this nothing, nothing in the world, unless you can find sport to their tents. I extremely stress and con with cruel pain to be usurped. I will hear that play, for never any can do the amiss when simpleness and duty tender it. Go, bring them in. I love not to see wretchedness or charge and duty in his service perish me. My gentle sweet, you shall see no such thing. He says they can do nothing in this kind. The kinder we to give them thanks for nothing, our sword shall be to take what they mistake, and what poor duty cannot do, noble respect will take it in life, and not merit. Trust me, sweet, out of this silence yet I seek the welcome. In the modesty of fearful duty, I read as much as from the rattling tongue of saucy and audacious eloquence. So please, your grace, the prologue of the dress, let him approach. No, 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 wait. <laughs> if we offend, it is with our good will. That you should think we come not to offend, but with good will. To show our simple skill, that is the true beginning of our end. Consider then, we come but in despite. We do not come as minded to content you. Our true intent is. All to your delight, we are not here. <laughs> that you should here repent you. The actors are at hand, and by their show, you shall know all that you are like to know. <laughs> this fellow does not stand upon points. He knows not to stop. Good morning, my lord. It is not enough to speak, but to speak true. Indeed. He has played on this prologue like a child on a recorder. A sound, but not in government. His speech was like a tangled chain. Nothing in Paris but all disorder. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show. But wonder on till truth make all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady Thisius serves him. This man with line and rough cast doth present wall, that by the wall which did these lovers sunder, and through walls chink, and through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper. At the which let no man wonder. This man with a lantern dog and bush of thorn presented moonshine. For if you'll know by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus's tomb. There, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hide by name. The trusty fist becoming first by night did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle did she fall. Which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain? Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, whereat with blade, with bloody, blameful blade, did he bravely broach his boiling, bloody breast. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> and this youth, tearing in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lying moonshine wall, and lovers twain at large discourse, while here they do remain. I wonder if the lion can speak. No wonder, my lord. 
His discretion, I am sure, cannot carry his valor, for the goose carries not the fox. It is well. Leave it to his discretion, and let us listen to the moon. This lanthorn doth the horned moon present. <laughs> <laughs> he should have worn the horns on his head. <laughs> he is no crescent, and his horns are invisible within the circumference. <laughs> it comes just where the candle burns to be. It is already in the snuff. I am weary of this moon. What do you would change? Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you that the slanthorn, the moon, I, the manson, the moon, the thornbush, my thornbush, and his dog, my dog. Why, <laughs> <laughs> all these are the lanthorns, for all these are the moon. But I will still stick. This is all Ninny's tomb. Ninus is. <laughs>
heart left her. She has tied him already with those three eyes. And does she mean to be delivered? Asleep, my love? What, dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus, arise! Speak, speak, quite <laughs> dove? Of his life as birds from the rise. And this pity after me, 